Well, a very warm welcome to you wherever you are around the world as you join Lander and Fitch session on Extraordinary Brand Ideas. My name's Nick Foley. I'm the president of Pacific Japan for Landor, based in Sydney, which is our first uh, city in the lineup today of speakers as we chase the sun 24,000 miles around 24 hours. Sydney ending up in San Francisco. The uh, headline for my session today is Brand Trust or Truth in a Changing World. Uh, the way all of our Lander and Fitch uh, offices will be done today is we will speaker who will present for about uh, 10 minutes, open it up to Q&A, which will then further take a roundabout. The impact of the coronavirus has not only impacted our personal lives, so meant we've had to reflect. With this in mind, let's dip you through some thoughts uh, had how brands need to show up in a crisis such as this. Since the world has changed a couple of months ago, you need to be thinking about it. So how your brand acts, talks, how it behaves is critical given the disruption we've seen to target audiences are going to COVID. So we will just uh, switch now to sharing the screen as I just cross, hopefully uh, see what is coming. Try that again. Uh, just give it one more sharing the screen here. And with any luck, you're able to see this now. Um, hopefully that's coming through. Um, so the, as I said, this is Brand Truths and Changing World. And the first area we wanted to look at was truth and candor. There's an expression that I'm uh, quite partial to and resonates well with branding. Trust takes years to earn beyond in a sec. So in times of uncertainty, your customer is placing even greater emphasis. At Landall, we measure brands based. Brands starting out relevance for everything. Over time, though, esteem and knowledge heavily with you. These two variables really aggregate uh, to become. One of the examples I've, I've liked as far as a brand goes in responding to the type of crisis we're seeing is so Marriott CEO Arne Sorensen points out in a video to his employees released on Twitter, the immediate Im impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the company's business has been greater than 9-11, but also the, great, uh, the 2009. More importantly though, Sorensen manages to directly communicate with his team in the midst of the crisis the way that many business he embodies the Marriott brand through his honest and clear dialogue. And let's face it, no one wants to give their team bad news. No one wants to tell people their problem that they may not have an immediate solution. To. And as a leader, the tendency is to try and paint the best picture possible. Except sometimes the best picture is still quite murky. Right now, that level of transparency is critical to helping people make the best decisions crisis that is affecting the life. The Marriott's a service brand. They have a huge amount of employees around. You could argue that uh, travel and hospitality has been the hardest hit as a result of it. So how the Marriott team talk and behave during a crisis like this is paramount. And of course, how the CEO of this brand communicates will set the tone for all other employees across the company. Sainsbury is a uh, large retailer that uh, anyone that's been to the UK or, or lives there would be. Uh, this, this crisis globally has brought about some great behaviour in people, but it's also exposed some less fortune. As a number of countries prepared for the lockdown that uh, came following the virus, a number of consumers went. Uh, Sainsbury's responded to this in quite a unique manner. The company put a more positive spin on its decision to restrict the number of essential products such as toilet paper and sanitizer. 
had on-shelf labels read, reading things like, please think before you buy. We are setting a limit of a couple of units per customer on a small number of these products to ensure we can offer them to everybody who needs them. Rest assured, we're receiving new deliveries regularly and you will get some. Please help us support as many people as you can. So rather than sounding punitive or directive, the brand appealed to the better sides of humanity and reminded us of a greater human need. The next variable I want to uh, consider today is differentiate or be left in competition. Now it's easy to get caught in the behaviour that reflects the norms of category rather than a specific brand. But right now, I would argue, your brand needs to have a distinctive position that really sets you apart from your competition. Starbucks is a case in point. Now, following the 2008 uh, global financial crisis, Starbucks wasn't in a great position. Uh, during the economic downturn, Starbucks was struggling to survive. Some consumers were turning away from the coffee king, whose pricing was seen to be more expensive than other coffee shops. However, in early 2008, Starbucks changed its CEO. With it, came an abrupt, life-saving change of focus away from bureaucracy and back. Brand started turning its stores to welcoming hubs and launched a new campaign called My Starbucks Idea, which was an online portal where customers could create a profile and contribute ideas about what they wanted from the Starbucks experience. Now that was the last uh, type of crisis we went through. Uh, one that we've, we've seen in New Zealand uh, is of course Triple Nine Farms. Uh, it's another brand that has recently changed. Triple Nine Farms is a New Zealand premium beef producer. And after COVID hit uh, and lockdowns would have put in place, demand for its goods suddenly dried up. Like many restaurateurs and food producers, Triple Nine had to rapidly change its model, find something that allowed it to go more directly to its customer. The company had a distinct brand that allowed it to stand out in new markets and has changed its distribution model and its marketing along with its packaging. Oh, and it also started creating meals to use from its non-premium meat. Not bad going since all of this only started to uh, affect its business. Early adaption is critical. Now this principle follows on nicely from my point about finding a true point of difference as uh, many of us know, China was probably the first country to be hit by COVID-19. As a result of uh, the onset of the virus, Nestle quickly adapted its offer with the Nesquino brand. Since the virus, Chinese consumers have become more aware of their health and wellness. Nestle is capitalizing on this shift with its new Nesquino health drink system, which it launched in China only last month. The system includes a silent, digitally connected Q-cut machine, superfood sachets uh, that uh, allow its consumers to uh, do these shakes. It's a superfood that comprises a, a variety of different ingredients, added probiotics for optimal digestion. Uh, what I like about this is it's simple and it's convenient. Uh, and Nestle again saw what was happening and were able to change pretty quickly. Now we've all heard of examples of uh, where um, particularly spirits manufacturers have, have moved into sanitizer, which at the early onset of the virus. Mr. Black is actually a, a liquor brand that Landor created a couple of years ago. And like many of uh, its competitors have realized that hand, hand sanitizer in, that switched across to it. Not only did the brand fight COVID, but the swift focus for Mr. Black enabled the company to keep jobs for hundreds of its employees. A savvy initiative brought quickly to life using the iconic look and feel of a premium litter. Act responsibly is, uh, is, is another one which uh, we would put on the list of what your brand needs to be doing in, in times of crises like these. On April 28th, YouTube announced that it would begin adding fact-checking fact panels to its US video. Now, YouTube is one of many to add links 
health organisation, Centres for Disease Control, Prevention, and other local uh, health authorities. Pleasingly, it started similar behaviour from some of its competitors. Airbnb is, has been hit very hard as a, a number of airlines and hotels. They've unfortunately had to let 25% of their workforce go. But in doing that, again, it's, it's, it's been very uh, transparent in, in how it's, it's uh, approached this. And um, what they've done is ensured that uh, their, their team of people who, who aren't staying on with the company um, actually have things like healthcare, which will 12 months. So again, this is it's great behaviour that they're they're taking, and and it, it ladders back to the responsibility associated with that brand. The final one I want to talk about today is stand for something before for anything. Again, we've seen uh, we've seen some companies pivot nicely in this regard, as companies have had to respond to a situation like we're seeing with this pandemic. BHP is a large mining company, and um, they've, they've chosen, in this case, to stand for something which is in economic crises such as these, it can often put huge pressure on financial systems and bring about a liquidity crisis. The cash flow is king, and what BHP quickly did was to say to all of the companies supplying BHP that it would shorten its days of payment. Perhaps if, if normally you're a supplier to BHP and it was a, a 60 days before you were paid, in this case they've, they've reduced those terms of payment, so its suppliers are being paid faster. Uh, so in, in an economic crisis, they're standing for liquidity, which is what really uh, provides momentum to economies during. And finally, when we think about standing for something, uh, Microsoft, which which is a, a enormously responsible and when you think about in the early 70s, um, it quickly saw what was happening with COVID-19. And this is a, a shot of its uh, Redmond campus, Seattle in the US. Um, and the company was very quick to actually say, we need people to work from home. I think there's about 40,000 employees at its uh, Redmond HQ. And even people that, um, so people that provided transport services or, or were concierges or, or reception people and may not be able to work from home, what it did was it said, look, we, we are going to make sure we all get through, through this together. It sent people home and even people that were not directly able to, to keep working off campus, uh, it's, it's maintained their salaries and, and benefits. So I think that's a, a really nice example, again, of standing for something through a difficult time such as this. Just before we throw to uh, Q&A, it would be useful to uh, sum up what, where we've been in the first of, of our uh, presentations. So as you watch this, think about how is your brand showing up? Uh, trust is king, as I said. Uh, it takes years to earn trust, but can be gone in a matter of seconds. And hopefully through some of these examples, by looking at brands like Marriott or uh, YouTube, we've seen that flexibility is a really important attribute to have. So in just concluding, and, and before we go across to Q&A, uh, how your brand currently acts, how it behaves, how it talks, I believe will determine what the next year will look like as consumers respond to a, an ever-changing environment. Uh, that concludes our first session in our series today. Our next session will commence 30 minutes, um, and that will be led by Jonathan Cummings, who is my counterpart in China. He's based in Hong Kong, and Jonathan will be talking about transforming destination. Back uh, using this platform. Um, within uh, 30 minutes, and we will uh, continue the extraordinary brand ideas for a world in transition. Thoughts and considerations. Thanks for your attention, and uh, enjoy the rest of your webinar.